is a alumnus of graduate level studies um, from Simon Fraser University, British Columbia, in Canada. Um, he will talk about the advanced typography workshops in quarantine. So I'm just going Great, um, thank you. So, so happy to be here in Paris at the Sorbonne to present a literary journal essay, and this first portion is called Saving Lives. The argument is always that design isn't about saving lives. Some people argue for its importance, for example, with a historical example of poorly designed election ballots causing American voters to be confused enough to vote for the wrong party or candidate. Teaching typography during pandemic and post-pandemic puts a certain kind of lens on it. In one sense, it's the least of our worries, but historically it's been so important that it must not be allowed to gather dust. I teach a class called Advanced Typography in Vancouver and often reflect on how throughout history, type has been carefully documented and considered in practical ways, but also um, in the way that it's read. Letters are meant to be read, and through the careful study of topics like readability and legibility, we can assess its continuing importance. Some say we can never see history as it's unfolding, but I simply offer this precy of typographic studies so that we can reflect and say, writing actually says a lot. Um, this, this second portion is, is uh, meaningful to me um, because it's during my upbringing, I guess, and it's called the poster. The poster is the hallmark of typography, the one deliverable that will never disappear. It had its heyday during the grunge period when cool bands plastered printed posters all over the place and any designer could make a decent living designing and typesetting these. At one point this shifted and we had to repurpose them, thinking of them as an Instagram icon in the corner of a screen or on the side of a Greyhound bus or in between YouTube videos before a person hits the skip button or as a motion graphics trailer before a feature film. The question of the relevance of a poster will never be fully valid because it has so much good baggage. It's what designers knew and loved and learned about growing up, and this will continue to be true as long as knowledge gets passed along. And yes, in a school where we're vocational to meet, meet the needs of industry today, um, we have to ask ourselves if posters will make the cuts, and I promise you one thing, those with wisdom will ensure that they will. This next portion is called Best Practices. We need to discuss certain recommendations. Never stretch type for type designers may have spent years of their lives wor working and making the thing, and to turn them into a deformity in a matter of seconds is horrific. Never use comic sans, except perhaps for a comic book, since that's what it was designed for. Every font has a purpose, use it for that. Most of the time, the side of a truck isn't meant to look like a comic book, so why would you make it look that way? Comic Sans has a bad reputation beyond this, cited as something to avoid, but I don't see it that way. Instead, we should carefully consider and employ, employ it for its intended use, which is actually very limited, and puts it in the corner by itself most of the time. Putting generous amounts of space between capital letters, also known as letter spacing, is usually good, as capital letters are notoriously hard to read in longer strings of text, and this letter spacing will help it. On the other hand, tightening letter spacing in a font like Helvetica can actually help Helvetica as we read word shapes. So there's less space between the characters in certain fonts and um, this helps us understand as our eyes travel over the shapes and we engage in the process of reading. Of course, there are exceptions. Eric Speakerman says you shouldn't put too much space between lowercase letters. People understood that and learned it, but then disagreed and did exactly what he said not to do. They rejected an idea once learned, and that, of course, is another way. And I'll just close with this last portion called climate. In our current typographic climate, I'm often called on to talk about type of the present day. Which font should I use? Should I pay for a font? How can I learn about type? I wish I could offer shortcuts, but there aren't many. Today, type has to work on the small screens of iPhones, or it has to move around the screen in a video which affects the job of a type designer as well as the job of a typographer. Old type that hasn't been digitized recently often suffers in small screen environments. Google Fonts is an alternative, but is it complete? Type today considers a myriad of modalities that we never could have imagined 10 or five years ago. To make it relevant today, we have to look at it in these new contexts and ask ourselves if it's still relevant we have to think about how we can amplify the value of craft that has been invested in so heavily over time 
and we must admit that it will hold an important place in history. We are the key decision makers of our future. What do you imagine? Thank you.